So once we have our patient information entered into the system or electronically through your CPOE order entry system, the next step really is to determine which transducer you're going to use and then adjust for the proper presets. The Z1 Pro actually makes this very simple. So there's one key right here that says transducer. You're just going to press that and you'll see your soft keys are going to light up here and for this portion of the exam we're going to cover the abdominal portion below the diaphragm. We're going to choose our curvilinear probe, the C62. Now why we're choosing this transducer, it's a lower frequency probe that's going to give us great penetration to get into those um, really obese patients and really allow us to image those intra-abdominal organs really well. Once we have our transducer in our hands, we also want to make sure we're on the correct presets. So the presets should be already set up by Zunari prior to the exam and you're just going to hit this button exam type. That's going to bring up your presets right here on the left side of the screen. We're doing the fast exam, so we're going to come here to fast, hit set, and now we're ready to go. Since this is one of the basic core applications, I just want to review a few key important things about how to actually scan patients. First, every transducer is going to have a little notch on the probe, and that notch is going to correlate to your Z up here on the screen. So the notch is going to give you the location of that Z on the screen and that's gonna give you your spatial orientation. If for whatever reason you're ever confused, you can take your gel here and actually just place it on half of the probe. And as you can see the screen here, it actually clearly demonstrates which side of the probe we're using there. So now that we have that straight, we know where the notch of our transducer is. We're going to gel up our probe. And for most applications, pretty much all of them, other than some of the cardiac stuff, that notch of your transducer is going to be facing either the patient's right or the head of the patient as you're performing your exam. One last thing I want to talk about before we get going is really how to hold the transducer. And what I like to stress to people is that you want to be as close to this probe surface as possible. And the reason is that's really going to give you much better control and it'll even allow you in certain cases to actually rest your hands on the patient as you're scanning them. And that's really going to stabilize the transducer. What we don't like to see is people holding the probe all the way back here because they're going to really be a little bit unsteady and not as stable as if you're holding the probe really close down to the probe face. So let's jump right into the exam. We're going to again start on the intra-abdominal portion. There are some individuals and clinicians that like to start with the cardiac views and the reason why they do that is they feel that if there's something truly emergent, you know, life-threatening seconds, that it's really going to be a pericardial effusion and tamponade so they like to do that view first. Others, like myself, really prefer to do the right upper quadrant view. That's the most dependent portion of the abdomen, probably the most likely spot that you're going to find pathology. Um, so I like to start with the right upper quadrant, moving then over to the left upper quadrant, pelvic view, and then move above the diaphragm fully to look at the lungs and the heart. Um, the right upper quadrant view, again, in adults, the most dependent portion of the abdominal cavity. In kids, that's going to be the pelvic view, so it's slightly different in pediatric patients. To start out the exam, again, we're going to look at our transducer, find that notch of the transducer. That's going to start out facing the patient's head, mid-axillary line, and typically you're going to catch a part of the liver there, the zonari system has this optimize button that's going to be really helpful especially for the more novice sonographers it's going to optimize your image and again we see liver here and what you're going to do is fan up to the ceiling down towards the bed until you run into what i call my guide in the fast exam which is your kidney which we're seeing here that kidney is going to be bright white hyperechoic centrally with a hypoechoic cortex Another piece of nebology that we're going to stress throughout as we go through these educational modules is really pay attention to your depth button right up here. 
and we typically want about a third of dead space behind the area of interest on the screen. So now we have the kidney. We want to find that potential space between the kidney and the liver, which is Morrison's pouch. And as with everything that you scan, you want to scan through the entire area of interest. So you're going to sort of fan up all the way towards the ceiling, down all the way towards the bed, and then come back to your kidney. The kidney is going to be your guide through the right upper quadrant and left upper quadrant. Once you've done that, then you're going to slide down towards the patient's feet. There we see inferior pull of the kidney and the psoas muscle. And those two anatomical landmarks signify the paracolic gutter. So here's paracolic gutter above that psoas muscle. Again, we're still seeing the kidney. Then we're going to slide up. Again, kidney's your guide. Back to the kidney and then slide up towards the patient's head even more. And here we see that bright white hyperechoic diaphragm. So if we see fluid above that, that's a hemothorax or pleural effusion. Anything below is going to be intra-abdominal. When you're doing this, pay attention to the liver tips. Make sure that you're not missing any fluid around those liver tips. And then come back to your kidney. Just a little trick. You see those really dark black rib shadows. If you want to get rid of those rib shadows, we're just going to angle the transducer along the plane of the ribs like this. Let me do that again so you can see angling along the plane of the ribs and that'll get rid of your rib shadows. But really in each of those three areas what you really should focus on is scanning up towards the ceiling, down towards the bed, in the area of Morrison's, in the area of the paracolic gutter, and in the area above the diaphragm. If you do that in those three locations you're not going to miss any free fluid. Next we're going to move to the left upper quadrant and again I want to stress make sure there's really adequate gel on that transducer surface and that's really going to allow those sound waves to get from the probe and into the body so don't be shy with your gel. Anatomically speaking left upper quadrant the kidney is going to be more superior and posterior in your patient so what we want you to do is hold the transducer and get your knuckles down to the bed so actually touch your knuckles down on the bed. Again, probe mid-axillary line, shooting sort of up towards the ceiling. I want you to find your guide, find that kidney. Again, hyperechoic centrally, hypoechoic cortex, just like that. Find that splenorenal recess, and you're going to scan up towards the ceiling, down towards the bed, all the way through that area. Again, to get rid of those rib shadows, to get that perfect image, you can slightly angle the probe down along the plane of the ribs. But as long as you're doing that motion up to the ceiling down towards the bed, you aren't going to miss any subtle free fluid. So we've evaluated splenorenal recess, come down, paracolic gutter, same thing. You have your psoas muscle, inferior pole of the kidney, up to the ceiling, down to the bed, come back, the kidney's your guide, there's your inferior pole come up, slide up towards the patient's head, hyperechoic diaphragm, look above that for any hemothorax or pleural fluid. Again, up to the ceiling, down to the bed. It's particularly important on the left hand side that you really see every single edge of that spleen, see the tips of the spleen because fluid often will accumulate along the splenic edges without collecting down into the splenorenal recess. So really scan through the area of the spleen. Ultrasound not great for solid organ injury, but as technology is getting better, we are picking up significant solid organ injuries, particularly higher grade injuries. So you should certainly get in the habit of evaluating your solid organs. So now we're going to go to our final intra-abdominal view, the pelvic view. Um, in kids, again, this is the most dependent portion of the abdomen. In adults, it's probably the most difficult view to catch free fluid, um, but certainly worthwhile to, uh, to evaluate for free fluid. I like to start sagittally, so I'm going to start with my transducer notch towards the patient's head, and your motion here is going to be left to right. 
slowly towards the patient's left, slowly towards the patient's right, and you want to scan through that entire bladder. And what you're looking for is anechoic or black fluid outside of the bladder causing the double wall sign, which we'll display to you a little bit later with some of our pathology. Once you've scanned through the entire bladder, you're going to rotate the transducer 90 degrees with your bladder still on the screen. The transducer is now towards the patient's right, and your motion is going to be down towards the feet, up towards the patient's head. Again, we're looking for free fluid outside of that bladder wall, causing the double wall sign. One thing to note, as you can see on this image here, is that if you're scanning through the bladder and the transverse, often we get very bright, bright white signals distal to the bladder in the far field. That's due to posterior acoustic enhancement. And something that we can do with our nobology up here is turn down the TGC. Normally you want all of these knobs lined up. Just turn it a little bit down in the far field. And that'll give you better contrast in the far field behind that bladder so that you're not missing any free fluid. Thanks for watching this brief Zonari educational video covering the EFAST exam. We hope this helps you in your daily clinical practice.